Welcome back. We head now to Ohio where jurors hear from the state's second key witness in the Pike County massacre trial of George Wagner IV as the defendant's own mother takes the stand. George, along with his brother Jake and their parents Billy and Angela, were all charged in the execution-style murders of seven members of the Rodin family along with Hannah Gilly. Many of the victims were shot and killed as they slept back in April of 2016. Investigators believe the massacre stemmed from a custody dispute over a child Jake shared with Hannah Mae Rodin. It wasn't until two years after the murders the Wagners were charged with the crime. Jake and Angela both pled guilty to their charges. On Tuesday, Angela took the stand but opted out of being on video or recorded while testifying. She told the jury about her husband's illegal activity from stealing fuel, boots and couches and growing marijuana with Chris Roden. In the first line of questioning from the prosecution, she admitted to planning the murders and said she, Billy, Jake and George were all involved. George could face the death penalty once the trial is over if he is convicted. Terry, does Angela's testimony as the mother of the defendant hit a little different than other witnesses testifying about the massacre and why? Yeah, absolutely it hits a little different. There's no question about that. That jury is listening and watching every word that comes out of her mouth. As a mother, you want to do everything you can to protect your child. So that jury has to wonder why is Angela testifying against her own son? Now, we know because of the plea deal, if she testifies truthfully and there's a conviction, then perhaps he's going to get life without parole versus the death penalty. But, you know, there's no real hard evidence against him. So they probably could have just, uh, she could have tried to just uh, help him get off altogether, frankly. But she's trying to tell the truth. Yeah. Philip, while Angela opted out of the video, we know that she testified in her jail outfit. Could what she's wearing affect how her testimony is received? Oh, I think it would, as a matter of fact. And I also think it's very prejudicial to George. Other, you know, if, if we're honest about it, it makes it look like, you know, uh, birds of a feather flock together, so to speak. You know, they look like a bunch of jailbirds. And uh, that does transfer to George when the jury is looking at her. She's going to look like she rules the roost, holds sway over that entire family, and that the jury can infer from her garb that the, her son is just as culpable. Now, on the other hand, if they would have put her in some type of couture with cameos and pearls, it would have looked a little far-fetched, and that might not have made her testimony sound or look all that credible. But I think on balance, her testimony really does, with that garb, hurt George. Yeah. Well, maybe somewhere between pearls and jailhouse outfit could have been the, the, the choice of outfit. Well, the accused Highland Park shooter appears in court for the first time in months. It's also the first time he's appeared since being indicted on 117 felony counts in relation to the deadly shooting. Prosecutors say the suspect opened fire during a 4th of July parade. Seven people were killed and dozens more injured. Officials say the gunman planned the attack for weeks and possibly months leading up to the massacre. At Tuesday's hearing, prosecutors said they gathered more than 2,500 pages of discovery on top of videos, photos, and audio recordings. The defense argued a trial date should not yet be set as they need time to go through the prosecution's discovery. The now 22-year-old pled not guilty to all charges and is being held without bail. He's due back in court on January 31st. Now to a retrial out of Ohio, legal teams are addressing multiple issues in court this week as prosecutors prepare to bring Gupreet Singh to trial again. Investigators allege that Singh executed members of his own family during a quadruple murder in 2019. In October, a judge declared a mistrial because of a hung jury. Prosecutors promise to try the case again, asking for the judge to recuse himself from the new proceedings. In the meantime, the defense has filed a motion to withdraw from Singh's case because he can't pay them anymore. Singh has been behind bars since 2019. The defense says he paid a quarter of a million dollars in attorney's fees at the beginning of his trial, but has no more funding for the second trial. Singh is accused of killing his wife, her parents, and her aunt inside an Ohio apartment. Prosecutors say money issues, unfair, and hatred for his father-in-law drove Singh to kill them. When we come back, he was an extreme skier dropping out of helicopters for a living. But now he's the defendant in a murder trial. What we know about the case against Dean Cummings in the New Mexico case.
Welcome back to Law & Crime Daily. Our final segment takes us to Sandoval County, New Mexico, where trial has officially begun for a world-renowned skier facing second-degree murder charges. Defendant Dean Cummings first made a name for himself as a national athlete and soon after a flourishing businessman in the heli skiing industry. But things took a turn when he suspected his business was under attack. In 2019, Cummings took his suspicions to YouTube, recording a 20-part series accusing law enforcement, government personnel, and mental health providers of plotting against him, leading up to the moment the defendant claims was an attempt to save his life. According to police, Cummings was trying to purchase property in February of 2020 when an argument ensued with Guillermo Arillo. Following the argument, Cummings shot and killed Ariola with an AR-15 claiming the victim threw a, quote, burning chemical in his face. Cummings was found fit to stand trial in his claiming self-defense. But the question becomes, what will the jury believe? Let's talk about it. Philip, how important is jury selection for both sides when the defense is going to argue self-defense? And can an attorney win before the trial even starts? Oh, sure. A lot of it's going to hinge on how you pick that jury. Obviously, you want gun aficionados. You want uh, lovers of the Second Amendment. You also want to try to reach people whose lives have been touched by mental illness, psych disorders, paranoia, delusions. You also want people who are into friendly sports, such as golf and skiing, because it's such a nonviolent pastime and avocation for so many Americans. And it's a very, very peaceful type sport, and people would not associate some type of homicidal act with people who play those type of non-combative, non-touch type sports. So uh, I think there's a lot to play with for Mr. Cummings in New Mexico. I don't know, I've seen a lot of angry people playing golf, but I see your theory, though. <laughs> Terry, is self-defense a strong defense here or just the only one the defense has? Well, I would use self-defense for sure. I'd also try to somehow use mental illness. All you have to do in New Mexico is prove that there was an immediate danger of threat. He thought that that chemical was being thrown in his face. You have to show that he was in fear and that a reasonable person would have reacted the same way. So if I were on that team, I would definitely try to say that he was acting in self-defense. But I'd also say that there was some sort of mental illness involved, that he was living a life and it went downhill and he had difficulties. So I'd do both if I were them. Yeah, I like the kind of hybrid you got there, but we'll see how it plays out. Well, thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us here on Law & Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America.